I've, I've clicked the button. I've put the screen on. <gasps> sure. Have you made the video? Been... No. Fucking useless. Don't swear. I don't swear. you got to not swear. Anyway yet. When we're live, yeah, well, I'm trying to prep you. Ready. <laughs> Why didn't you do the video? Because uh, Tara's going to hospital later, and well, I was at work, and... No, you're useless. I had dinner, you and had I ginger. forgot. Ginger beard? Because you're old, fat, ugly. Ginger beard. Blah, blah, blah. Oh. Keep talking. If I put an old one on, they're all going to rip me because they have the wrong date on it. Uh, they won't notice. They will notice. I hope they roast you because you deserve it. You're useless anyway. I, I love how you one support job me. You can't even do the one job. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. No, it's, it's more than one job. I've had a lot to do. Come on, go live. Don't oh, know hold on. One sec. Let's hit this one. Down the street with your red lips and funky beat You better hold your head up to the sky I'm gonna go with you till the day I die Hello. Yes, I know it's an old clip, but somebody called no, Scott forgot to do one. No, nobody wants to see your ugly face. <laughs> hey, Russ. Hey, JJ. Hey, Mad Manx. Hey, Mark the Spider Guy. Hey, Craig. Hey, Connor Tron. Hey, Silver Webbers. Uh... Hey everyone. Don't don't say hello to Chris in the comments. He's done he's done nothing but insult me. Hey Anton. They hey Eric. Like they like me. They only come because of me. Hey Philip. <laughs> now to hey, lose Phil. several hours watching these, these streamers have become kind of a highlight. Ah, oh, appreciate that, Eric. Hey Sergeant Spiders. Hey April and Mike. Hey, Chantal. What's up, Anton? So yeah, what's um, blah, I'm, blah, I'm, blah, blah, I'm, blah, I'm pretty, I'm blah, pretty blah. good. Uh, uh, uh. Chris, unfortunately. Don't, he, Chris. He, he, he didn't even notice I muted him. <laughs> can, can, you, can you not? Until later on. Hey, Trond. Hey, Torbay. Hey, Erdkane and Scouser. Um... I'm completely fine. Unfortunately, Chris has come come away from the show again with with a bit of um, no, the CFTN cold. I'm going to call it. That was before the show. Was it before the show? Yeah, just, I was about ill on my life as well, didn't you? I didn't talk. Oh before. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we are actually going back to that comment. We are going to be live for about two hours. Um, my wife has um, hopped a hip, so she's going to go hospital in a little bit and have that rearranged. And the babysitter can't get here till ten o'clock. So around ten o'clock, we will we we will have to end it this evening. Um, so we have have got a couple of hours. So it's an open mic night with questions um, and answers. So you guys can ask a few questions in the comments if you want to either myself or Chris, or whatever else comes on. Again, Chris is a little bit unwell, so he's going to be coming in and out of chat um, throughout the evening. He's probably gone for another drink of water, to be honest. Uh, let me just whack this down. <laughs> um, we think she dislocated it um, over, over the weekend. Just, just, just don't ask me how. <laughs> It was great to meet you both on Sunday and great mystery box from Chris as well, says Russ. What did you get in it, Russ? And how much was it? Well, I've just dropped the stream yard link into the comments. Hey, Tony, um, for, for you guys to click that and come and join us on stream. You do not have to have your camera on. If you feel a little bit shy, you don't have to have your camera on. You can turn your camera off 
um, like Chris keeps doing. Um, that's completely fine. Come and say hello. Anton, get up here, show off your snake room. <laughs> I wish he would. Very private guy, but one day he will. Um, but yeah, we had the show last weekend. Absolutely amazing. Um, the invert show guys, they're just taking it to another level and then another level. Um, I think the, the two walls were literally dominated by the spider shop and by by creatures from the north. Um, two awesome <laughs> fellas. And the tables there were just like... Hey, Daniel. Oh. Still buzzing. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Martin. I saw your video about the huntsman with the babies. I've got one too. When is it best to separate them? Um, I'm following Jeremy's um, wild world, world advice. I'm, I'm keeping them together so they can not only feed on the flies, so the strongest survive. So the, the stronger ones will eat the smaller ones, and I'll be left with around 15 by the end of it, I think. So they're all in there together at the moment. Hey, Rose. Did you walk into town about an hour before this show on Sunday? No. No. Pretty convinced I saw you before the bridge. No, Rose. I didn't. No. No, I didn't. didn't. Hey, Stu. Um, but the show is pretty epic. Uh, I've been chatting to Lee from the Spider Shop and from the Invert Shows UK again, um, just before the live, actually, about the London show. And what he's got planned is going to be taking it up another level again. So really looking forward to the London show. Rose, I've got I've got a couple of um, like lookalikes around. There's there's literally there's a couple in Coventry that look similar to myself. But bald head, big big beard. There's there's tons of us. <laughs> hey Jeremy. Oh, cheers, Jez. Jeremy, there's been a question about the Huntsman babies when they should be separated. Um, you're the best dude to answer that one. Big beard is real. Your one is fake. Yeah, it is fake. Do we have to pay for parking at London? I, I, I have no idea, Danielle. No, but you'll have to pay for Eulers because it's in Eulers. Uh, Chris Scott, you're still doing Glasgow. Um, Anton, I might need your hand for Glasgow as it goes because I want to take the wife up on the Friday and then drive back down on the Monday. But I don't want to pay £130 per night at a hotel. Um, I want a cheaper hotel. So we can go for the three nights. So if you know of any Anton near the venue, please let me know, dude. Jeremy's just said, what species of huntsmen are the ones that you were talking about separating? Um, and thank you, Mark. Mark said, uh, congrats on the 10K. Uh, and so did Craig. Thank you, Craig. Well, Danielle, if you've not noticed, it's not it's a different venue this year. So we've moved away from the old venue. Been to three shops today around here. No one wants them. No. Nope. Yeah, um, it's happening in the same place as, as I is, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. As far as I can it's tell, it's, it's, it's in Euless. So unless your car is Euless compatible, you'll have to pay the Euless charge. Like twelve quid in Glasgow? No, London one. Oh, the London one. Yeah, it's in Euless. Oh, oh dear. Thank you, uh, to Kate and Scouts. We are doing a ten k uh, giveaway. Um, I've already chatted to Luke. Luke's going to do something. Um, spa spiders. Mark Spider guys put about for a communal in that giveaway. Uh, Post Pods is doing a £50 mystery box. Um, Silver Webbers, some of the Baralistas babies. And I'm pretty sure I've missed one, but um, I'm going to be doing it in a couple of weeks. It gives me a couple of weeks to kind of start messaging a few sellers and see if they want to support or not. Um, I need to look around <laughs> my collection and see what I can do. Um, I have got a heart bacteria, pork pips, uh, pork trapeze. Uh, juvenile female, which I think I'm going to stick in there, but there might be a couple of bits. The area it's in Scott is right next to the city centre. That's why it's so expensive. I'd need to have a look. Yeah, Anton, if it's on, if there's if there's somewhere on the outside of the city centre that's a bit cheaper, let me know. Um, that'd be absolutely awesome. But I want to bring the wife up on like Friday afternoon and then drive back on the Monday. Oh, for Glasgow, take her away for a little bit of a holiday. Um, but anyway, on to 
invert news so the invert news is obviously we had the invert show on sunday and everybody who went is still absolutely buzzing from that if you didn't go and you want to know what it's what it's like to attend one check out my previous video or head over to the invert shows uk um youtube channel um and check out that video i don't mind which i, I, I filmed them both which is pretty cool danielle's car is you less free um but yeah that's been about it with me for the last week as far as invert news goes apart from what we bought at the show i've not had anything else going apart from bet we paired up balfouris um again so fingers crossed she lays an egg sack in the next uh, couple of months my legs are sore as hell from the show i know what you mean mad bank oh <laughs> i can remember sitting down on Lear's stand at the very end of the show and literally it was like <laughs> wow um so have you guys got any invert news let me know in the comments or any animal news full stop you've been breeding anything getting anything has that tiny sling that you've had for ages finally molted um let us know in the comments got anything new going on chris did you pick up did you get anything from the show a couple of males in the two what males uh off of bt is my machala uh it's a terrier lowland and uh two lp males oh anton got a female obt from toby two weeks ago louise i've ordered from uh cftn and paid by bank transfer haven't heard anything yet obviously um <coughs> obviously give him a couple of days off the show i think it's should every every way if you'd every seller you give you could give him a couple of days after the show before he dispatches the things signs and signs and signs chris loves signs says tim exotic enclosures what, what i think his dispatch days was wednesdays anyway or thursdays i can't remember so just, just just wait a day or two and it should be fine i've got a nice dipulara species peru female from the show says craig uh rose i also bought the flower beetle larvae rather impulsively i know it was an impulsive buy for me rose tell you and the seller told me it's going to take them around a year to become beetles do you have a rough idea of how much they actually eat um a lot a lot they'll eat their i think it's 60 percent of their own body weight and then they molt into in the next size um and then you have to change out the substrate so we have to change out the substrate like every month but i've also been advised to put in flake soil so or shiitake um soil with that mulch so they'll munch some of that as well silver webbers yay my panama blonde that should have arrived today they sent me a giant whitening instead as the blonde didn't look well enough to post didn't tell me or ask me did i want a refund or exchange that's a bit naff silver spiders that is silver webbers sorry that is a bit naff um i certainly would kick up a fuss if i'd ordered one spider and they sent me another one because the one that i originally ordered looked a little bit rough for transport that is a bit rough steve would love to ask you and um, we're not experts do i risk to lose a pokey if there's no more than 17 degrees in winter months uh 17 degrees is not an ideal temperature for a pokey um i'd want to see it more bare minimum kind of 22. <laughs> martin jackson got a p a subvuska from ads first pokey i've ever had they're amazing is that the highland or the lowland just bear, bear in mind as well the subvuska that's in the hobby 99 percent of them aren't um a hundred percent some of them have got some of the bits and bobs in with them so they're not like a true form they are actually a hobby form uh osman's got oh let me just scroll back up to that message two heart bacteria uh baviana two heart bacteria dictator a subadult female chili brackets discusses black coming and ordered pick up this sunday from the horton show oh dude that's wicked jeremy's wild world going back to the hunts of uh, the beetles the main thing with the beetle larvae is changing out the substrate depending on how much frass poo is in the substrate don't throw it out as it's a great fertilizer for the plants 
Louise, I hope I can get the Polythia Metallica at the next Invert show next month. Um, I know, um, I know uh, Luke's getting a few Metallica babies in next week um, at Spa Spiders. Unless Danielle, she's in chat Portsmouth, unless she's also got some as well. Uh, Louise, <laughs> yeah, what? Waven Stronghold, hey, how long is is too long waiting for an underground Darlingi to molt? I'm having. Oh, actually, I lied. A... Actually, I lied. It's it's not in Eulers. It's literally just outside the Eulers, so you need to be careful where you drive. Uh, but you can. Where's the? Don't you just download the map to Google or something? Or ask, I just did. This job is here. And the Euless finishes there, literally on the side of the park. So you need to be very careful there. That is a little bit close, isn't it? And now it's literally just just outside. So to avoid that charge, please make sure you drive around the blue area, not into it. Yeah, if you look, because the shop is there. So best option is just come Ashford where you come from Ashford. Mark Spider Guy says, how's your foot? Let's see. Um, foot. But yeah, if, you, if your Dolingi is underground, it can be underground for months because it can be down there just sitting there, um, not even on its back, not even molting or anything like that. So I wouldn't worry even if it's down there <laughs> for three or four. And spiders can go a long, long time without food as well. Philip of Fish, I won my first a T Pamphabetis Vespentinius at the show. And it's awesome. The wife wasn't happy. I didn't tell her, but she's seen the pictures I posted on Facebook and told her it won't grow very big. You it's little liar. liar. <laughs> Conotron, I've got a couple of giant millipedes and an XL invertarium from TSS. The substrate is due a change, but one of the millipedes has been buried for the, the last couple of weeks in pre -mal. What do I do? The millipedes, have you got a little bit of sand in that substrate just to help help that millipede um, molt? If so, awesome. Um, but if the millipedes are down in the substrate and they're molting, the best thing to do is just leave her alone. Hey, Josh. Have you put the link in the comment? Yes. Oh, the wife's in chat. Hey, Tara. She's made a window, then oh, webbed it up, says right. Wyverns. Get a torch, Wyverns, and see if you can't. Like, if she got a webbed up window like this, put the torch here and try and view it here. <laughs> you, might, you might be able to, to see what's going on. You're right, Tron. Hey, yeah. Tron. Did you like hey, the picture I sent you? Yeah. <laughs> if, um, if you guys have got any Scorpion questions, we have um, a resident Scorpion expert with us this evening in the form of Tron. Well. He... He, he does he does go asleep most of the time, but he's all right. <laughs> he's, expert, he's, expert in, he's expert in losing same scorpion twice. <laughs> that too. Uh, Josh, I've just got a pair of African train millipedes that I'm going to attempt to breed. Awesome. Good luck. Hey, Good luck. Not impossible. Um, the, there's a young lad up the road that I give quite a couple of little inverts to, um, and I gave him some millipedes, train millipedes, and he actually had babies from. Hey, Tim. Tim, Hello, I should Tim. be wearing your t shirt tonight, Mr. Baxter, but the, I don't know where Tara's put it. So blame her. I think you need 50p in your meter. You're a bit glitchy. Oh. You, 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 your video is a bit glitchy. It sounds all right with your video now. As long as we've got Trod's sound, that's all right. He's all the way over in Norway. Uh. Hey, Link, you okay? I oh, know, Tim. It's grounds for divorce. Hey, Charlie G. Let me just whack this back in the chat. Boom. Oh. Josh got a gravid giant Thai forest scorpion. Josh, do you know the actual um which scorpion it is? Conatron, yeah. Great the thrust. Yeah, no worries. Eric, now that millipedes have been brought up, do you maybe have some tips on some insects that can be get communally with gigas and millipedes? Oh, with the millipedes, I really enjoy keeping isopods. Um so when the millipedes molt 
um, the isopods will eat the old malts and stuff like that. They, they seem to be, I wouldn't say symbiotic because they're not, but they're, they're, they seem it when they're together, if that makes any sense. Um, but then, I, I don't know, it depends where your beetles are, uh, millipedes are from. There is certain beetles that you can keep with millipedes as well. Silver Webbers, bought Polythiary Gala Sling, Mexican half and half, three mystery slings from so many legs with a cup, Himalayan Earth Tiger, Mexican Red Romp, and the Great Noise. Silver Webbers, mystery gimp box from t I hate the fact that they call it a gimp box. Does my head in. Uh, hey, Nameless. Rose, why not have had juvenile and older spiders before? I've got four or five ish slings in sling pots. My first slings can't really see how I can feed them in such a small area. Should I pre kill? Um, you can try first hatchling red runners. Um, if they don't go for them, then try pre killing. Um, but I think with the slings, it's all like literally trial and error until you find um, something that they do munch. If they're not going for the first hatchling red runners, you can, there is um, fruit flies as well. Chantal, Tron, what's the best beginner scorpion? I've been getting a few different <laughs> answers from the tarantula hobble. Mm. No pressure, Tron, but Tim's in chat and all. Yeah, I know. Uh, and I <laughs> would say, depend because there's so many and depends on what you like. If um, tropical enclosures are your thing than one of the heterometro species or the asian forest uh if you like desert species then the giant desert harry or yeah one of the dune scorpions i think i think the the forest scorpions are pretty bulletproof as long as you got yeah. that humidity they yeah, they do allow you to make the odd mistake, and, don't they? The humidity and temperature, and as long as you give them some space to dig and stuff, you can't really go wrong. Uh, Wyvern Strongold, okay, she's molted and she's fine. So relieved now. I feel silly. I just didn't think of using a torch. That's all right. The main right, thing is your mind's, your mind's now at rest. Oh, the wife's disappearing. Bye, Tara. Make sure you keep Ooh. Scott. Uh, Rose says, well, I really wanted WS Panama, but the slings were £65. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, also back to that question uh, with beginner species. It all depends on with how much space you also have. Because... If you don't have a lot of space, you can always go for a dwarf species like the. Uh, oh, Jesus. My brain just got blank. But uh, the pygmy wood. Does pygmy wood the well go? Yeah, um, it doesn't need loads of space and are pretty easy to keep. Josh says, I've got two tiny baby Thai bush scorpions, um, CF uh, stock man norium, that are refusing to eat. I've tried everything. Um, in the past, if you can get the prey item, however small it is, um, with a pair of tongs and rub it on the, on the inside of the claw, so here, they can sometimes sense it, and then that will provoke them into eating. Um, it could be the fact that they're still very, very small and need another malt. Um, what do you reckon, Tron? Yeah, can be many things. Uh, also, scorpions can go a really long time without any food. So, but for scorpions, I would try to get them to eat just because they're in a developing state. Uh, so if they don't take live food, I will try maybe 
do a pre-kill and with something juicy so they can get the taste so so uh, what was what you're thinking tron like a, a mealworm cut it so it can sense that juice and then yeah yeah hey charlie sub joe sub scott hello everyone yeah man i really wouldn't worry about your scorpion yeah, eating man. like uh i've had i've had scorpions go months and months and months and months without eating yeah um, I've raised two little L Australasia lay the parrot puffinogenic ones from like real small scorplings. And I used to just put uh, pre killed flies and stuff in there. And that was fun. How did but, the baby scorps get on with the pre kills then? They, they, well, I mean, they've molted out into the next two stages. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I never, <clears throat> I, ne I saw them disappear. So. I guess they were eating them. Or well, they were just, uh, I don't know. But they can definitely go a hell of a long time without eating scorpions. Yeah, they can. Hey, Nameless. Hey, Lewis. Hey, Joe. Hey, Make Jack. sure the scorpion hey, is still drinking water. Yes, Nameless. Yeah. That's the definitely definitely the important thing. Is make sure you're keeping it humid and giving it water. Have you um, have you got any uh, invert news this week, Charlie? Um, I think so. Um, no, not really anything too crazy. What's up, Jezza? Uh, no, I don't think so. Did you pick up anything from the show? Yeah, I got a few bits. Uh, I just did a video about it, actually. I just uploaded that tonight. Um, yeah, I got some nice stuff. I got a subadult female, Hapalopus gurea. Um, I got um, a sub-male, Pemurinus kigoma. I got two adult female elegans. got... What else did I get? Didn't get too much this show. Definitely got a few bits. Oh, I got a subadult female Lugardi as well, which is nice because I don't have a large Lugardi. So, yeah. Could one of the more. moderators put Charlie's link into the chat, please, so everybody can give him a subscription and go check out that video that he's just uploaded tonight as well. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, they did. Um, <laughs> Charlie, Charlie is one of them. Charlie is one of the boys in in the Charlie. in the hobby that I will go and ask for advice if I'm stuck on anything as well, as well as Luke and Chris. Charlie, did you put it on Instagram? I didn't put the video on Instagram, but I put it on my Instagram story. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you link it? On my Instagram story, yeah, yeah, yeah I did. Yeah. Joe says I'm worried about my uh, Vitalius Chromatus. Buried herself three weeks ago and not being seen. Everyone says it's normal thing for them. There's the video. Uh, can't help but worry. The problem there, Joe, is us as humans. Oh. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't hide away from months on end. So we expect to see people all the time, and then we we put that same emotion onto the animals as well. So when the spider goes down and it disappears for three months, we naturally start worrying about it. But don't don't worry. As long as those humidity levels are correct in that enclosure, um, you'd be fine. She's probably just down there considering molting or, or could even have had enough food and just had enough and gone down there to chill out for a bit. You know, we, we go chill out for an hour. Spiders go chill out for months. <laughs> yeah. yeah to, to back, put it the best to, way I can describe it. Yeah. To put it into context, I had a, a dwarf uh, spider, a half pack gorilla over jerky that didn't eat for eight months. Um, actually, it might have even been longer than that. Um, and I didn't even try and feed her. I mean, if their abdomen is big and you don't need to feed them, they're going to be just fine. Uh, as long as you're giving them water, water is definitely um, a lot more important than food in tarantulas. Although they do get some moisture for, from their food. Well, same for scorpions as well. And, and mm -hmm. humans, really. You can survive a lot longer without water, but not, uh, you can survive a lot longer without food and not water, is what I meant to say. Yeah, I think water's something like is it a couple, is it two two three days of food you can go yeah. eat? Yeah. Uh, 
Well, I mean, we lose, we lose water, we lose water through urine, through sweating, through stomach, through breathing. Um, <laughs> and so, so is the inverts. The inverts are going to do be losing a lot of water all the time as well. So, as Charlie says, we have to make sure those water bowls, those water dishes, are in every single <sighs> enclosure, regardless. If you never ever see your invert drink water out of that water dish, just put it in anyway. Sooner or later, they might. And then going going back to the periods that spiders can go without eating, um, I've got a moderatum sling, and it eats once a year, mm. literally, and it's still so so tiny. But yeah, once a, a year, it will take down something, and that's it. Yeah, I got a calcarius sling, <laughs> similar to that. Half the palmers, they, 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 oh gosh, yeah, they take a long time to mold. Yeah. Uh, Mark, the spider guy, hasn't seen his teddy bear spider for about five months. Not worried. What's a teddy bear spider? I believe it is. Um... I'm not. I'm not great with all the common names. It's like uh... looks a little bit like. Fun of Palmer. Um, it's a jungle spider. No, no, I don't think so. Unless he said it is. Well, Google says. Yeah, I think I think I think I'll keep disappearing off screen because that's where the laptop's over there and I can see your comments. But but I think the problem is some it's some uh, spiders when they get sold, they get given a common name by the seller, and it's really confusing for everybody. It's like uh, Constanza Luenza or something, species Puebla. Looks a bit like a Fauna Palma. Uh, Louise, my giant white knee is knee. a menace. When uh, I just give him water, he keeps attacking it, while my juvie white knee poses is, is I love my spiders that have a bit of spice and their personality. I think I think when it, Chantal says it, it's is a teddy bear spider a curlier? Thanks, um, yeah. I think a, a lot of the spiders top kind of um, attack water when you, when you top it up that water bowl because it's almost like a foreign object coming into their enclosure. Because in the wild, they wouldn't have what you're doing, which is literally a, a waterfall going straight into a big dish. It would come down as rain and collect in pockets. So the spider thinks it's, what's this? I need to attack it. Um, as you can imagine. Scott, yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah, um, Charlie, can you pronounce that? Because I've uh, got no chance, absolutely no chance. <laughs> I, I said it almost. It was like Constance. Uh, I can't. Cots. Cots. Talama species Puebla. Cheers, brother. Appreciate that one. My Is that the know... one that you got up on screen, Chris? What? Yeah. I only knew no, that was called cool. a teddy bear tarantula because my friend got one and didn't know what it was. Well, apparently this teddy bear spider is a jumping spider as well. All right. If you Google, it's kind of what comes up. Yeah. The question is... That's, really that's, that's always been the issue with the common names, though, because one yeah. common name can cover... I'll give you an example. Birdie and spider. How many, how many <coughs> spiders in the hobby are, are referred to as a birdie and spider? Yep. Literally, what? 50 percent yeah you know it's like uh el sazamai is a blue birdie yeah, but they're not very big at all <laughs> why are they called a birdie yeah? <laughs> i had a I had a guy come over today a little while ago right um there was a guy that came to pick up uh, a heat mat from me because i used to have a lot of um oh yeah that's a good way to break it down um but yeah so he came around to pick up a heat mat a while a few months back um and he picked it up, and he uh, we got chatting about what he keeps and stuff, and I showed him the spider shed. And uh, he was like, oh, yeah, I've always been thinking about getting a uh, tarantula, so I gave him an OBT. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, he loved that. Um, and he came back uh, today to buy some more tarantulas. So we, we got chatting and stuff, and uh, he brought some stuff from me. Um, and, yeah, he said he gave the OBT to his dad because he's always wanted an OBT. And, um, awesome. Yeah, he came and brought some new ones. He's coming to London show, so. Uh, Rose won a bunch of uh, mantis as well as fruit flies on the raffle. Actually a bit confused about how I get the fruit flies out to feed them to the mantis. Really silly question. It's not a silly question. 
Um, the best thing to do with fruit flies, I've found, um, Charlie might do something different, but I put mine, if I'm prior to feeding, I'll put mine in the fridge for a few hours and then, and then pour them into a sling pot. Pour a few into a sling pot and then you can just tap them out as and when you need. Um, what do you do, that, Charlie? Yeah. No, I have heard about that and I, I'd say that probably is the best way to do it. But uh, personally, so some of them have that little foam stopper at the top. I just hold open the foam stopper a little bit, wait till one or two run out, and then I close the foam stopper and then tap them in. The problem with that foam stopper is it, it's here. It's in the middle. It needs yeah. to be on the edge. So you can pull something out, like, or even on the side of the actual thing. So you could go like that and then just go tap, tap. With it being yeah. in the middle, it might just be the way I try and get them out, but I really struggle getting them all out. Mm. So I, yeah, just I literally just... Lid. I pull it open and then wait for one to normally crawl around the side or two, and then I just let it go and then pop up. Uh, Bebex just said the same. Uh, feeding fruit flies, it's a lot easier if you chill them in the fridge for five or ten minutes so they slow down. Um, the only the only reason I thought about that was because when we used to go fishing, you'd put the maggots in the fridge to slow them down, stop them turning into casters. And you warm them up and they wiggle a lot on the hook. And I thought, well, I wonder if the flies would do the same. Ah, oh, cheers, Mark. Appreciate that. Charlie, why are you selling at the moment? Have you got anything? I have an absolute corker of a list, but I've got to keep From it in that. London because I've got my table at London. So you've got a table booked at, at London, sure? At London, yeah. What's what's the top five species that you've got for sale on that table, dude? That are I'll unavailable say, until the London show. I'll say that I have a subadult female Gramostola polka with a smaller male pair. Um, I've got another juvenile female. I've got a a really large adult female G Rosea NCF. Um, I got a few other bits uh, like. Um, I got a female Pamphibetus platyoma. Um, she's probably like really large juvie or subadult. Um, female Nantacharum. I got a few other bits. Uh, got some good stuff. Hopefully though. Oh nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm and, not uh, gonna lie. Please. I am. I am looking forward to the London show and spending oh. some time in your spider room. Yeah, man, I can't wait to have you. I, I can't wait to have all of you. It's going to be amazing. I am literally just going to be looking at your baboons going, wow. wow. Charlie, if these go missing, will you notice? <laughs> yeah. you know, it's funny. It's funny. My, I said that to my girlfriend the other day because she, she was saying, like, uh, where's this? I can't remember what started the conversation, but um, she uh, she made a joke about something. I said, listen, if, what, if it's a single sling of this room went missing, out of all of them, I said I would know exactly what it was. I guarantee you. He's not gonna have a clue. <laughs> He's uh, not. He hey, says John. that I pocketed the, every time I've been there. I pocketed something in his. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna speak to Chris and get something a little special to put in your tea. So when you drink it, you fall asleep, and then boom, what spiders? You never bought any, Charlie. You haven't got any. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm out of everything. I'm super looking forward to lunch show. Like. It's, yeah, man. It'd be, it, I'll tell you what, it'd be, it'd be awesome because, I mean, we've been chatting for a good time now, Charlie, in the WhatsApp group. We, we, we speak privately as well. It'd be just awesome to spend a bit of time with you away from a show. Um, like, before, do you know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah, it's, uh... at, at a show, you know, a lot of us are just busy, really busy. Yeah. So, Charlie was on the spider shop stand and he didn't stop. Chris was on the CFTN stand and Chris didn't stop. Um, and I was trying to film two videos in the same day as well. So it was, it, it's kind of really difficult to catch up with old friends at a show. So right. <laughs> right. Right. sounds ridiculous. Sounds ridiculous, but it really is like when you're at the show, if you have any responsibility, a table, anything, you, you can't stop. <laughs> you can't go. Uh... There's, there's a couple of people off TikTok that were there. And they messaged me and said, like, we were there and we've seen, we seen ourselves in the video, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm really sorry I didn't see you. I didn't. And they were like, oh, you just look so busy. And then the next thing was, like, we wanted to go and speak to Chris for a bit, but he was just on the mystery boxes looking really busy as well. I was like, I don't know what to say. Not a lot of mystery boxes, Chris. 
Yeah, I thought so because uh, it was a busy show, man. Like that was that pile crazy. went from there to there. Yeah. You wait. You wait to see that um, hundred pound mystery box of CFT. Uh, my word. Oh, yeah. It will be a video, but I am highly impressed. stuff yeah well anyway i i got i've got some decent slings as well um hopefully my idiotheli mirror will be good by then my sack will be good by then so so i have those on my stand hopefully um i got some got some lovely verses coming in cats of bread recently um obviously cats of bread but uh they should hatch out uh probably in a couple of days actually um and then yeah half i tear apocryphies and Bob for saying that first, so gonna have you. Uh, Louise, I'm only going to the next month's show as it's close where I am, as I live in Manor Park, um, East London. Louise, there could be other people in your area going to other shows that you could hook up with on 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 lifts and fuel, like me, me and Mark the Spider Guy do. Um, I'll put put I'll put some posts on the Facebook group a bit closer to the time to see who's going from where. And probably anybody can give anybody a list. Tim says, are you okay, Chris? You're sweating like P. Diddy. I'm fine. He's not fine. That's that, that's Chris's typical reaction. He's got a real bad cold. Really bad. Worse than man flu. I had a guy over to the guy that came over today, Tim. I don't know if you uh, heard what I said. He's going to come and have a chat to you at London show because he's got a few questions about scorpions and stuff. I said, you're the man to talk to. He, uh... <laughs> We were sitting down and he was like, oh, yeah, I got a really good uh, price. I got a captive bread for a scorpion for 20 pounds. And I was like, oh, like, well, like a scorpion? Oh, for, yeah. For, for, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No. I was like, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I didn't say anything, but I was like, hey, you need to, teach, you need to speak to Tim. Uh, what? You, you know what it's like when people aren't in the Invo <laughs> hobby and they just shop at pet shops. They don't really know the prices. Wow, unfortunately, the pet shops are going to come to the shows and buy like five, five off Tim yeah. for like dirt cheap, take them back to the pet shop, and then, and then, well, quadruple yeah. and some on the price by the sounds of things. Yep. Um, and again, if you do want a scorpion, you're going to any of the shows, head over to CFTN. And on the end of CFTN t- table, you will see a giant of a man with a mohawk, and that is Tim Baxter. Um, and he he sells tons of captive bread stuff, which is absolutely awesome. Um, oh, also, oh. if you buy anything off him and you're a little bit concerned about your the keeping of that scorpion, he is literally one of the experts. Isn't he? I was just he about is. to say He's that. Like, not like a lot of people might breed stuff and put stuff together and get lucky with a sack or scorpions or whatever, but this guy is like truly. He reads like he he's got a lot of knowledge. <laughs> Definitely yeah. credit to the hobby. The knowledge he has on Scorps is insane. Absolutely insane. Louise says, "I love mystery boxes. Usually get them from the Spider Shop and Portsmouth Tarantulas." Uh, yeah, they are two two awesome sellers and awesome mystery boxes. I, I've. Not had one off Portsmouth for a long time, actually. I tend to go TSS for the mystery boxes and CFTN. I'll have to get one off Danielle at London Show if she's got any, I think. The best ones, the best ones are Sparse Spiders at BTS. Uh, Rose, if you were going to buy inverts outside of a show in the UK on sites, which ones would you specifically recommend? What, the sellers? Spar spiders. Um, channel members get fifteen percent off, and Luke is just an absolute darling. Creatures from the north. Creatures from the north. Portsmouth tarantulas. The spider shop. Um, un- unseen, unseen universe. Um, yeah, all of them. I was good. Portsmouth wasn't at the show. I was hoping to get a mystery box from the Silver Webbers. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I think I think you know you got to remember with a lot of the the sellers have got kids and other things outside of the hobby as well to be thinking about. Um, it's and a long that, way from Portsmouth, it, and it's a long way from Portsmouth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Eric, 
here pet shops can't just go to expos and like and buy stock they need to follow certain procedures in order to be able to buy animals and sell them um talked about this with a store owner once i would like to see something like that brought into the uk actually that'd be that'd be pretty cool um yeah, especially to some pet shops i thought he was talking about here and i was like that doesn't sound right no 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 not here no. but it's not on the reptiles um, Yeah, I think Sorry, for reptiles, some shops can't take outside fucking because the rules doesn't allow blah blah blah. Some shops take. Okay, hey Gwen. Hey Gwen. We have a uh, <laughs> echo. We have Tim. Good evening. How are we doing? Yeah, good, Tim. You? Yeah, not bad. So I was kind of listening to what was just being said about uh, shops and. Um... Uh, hold hold on a minute, Tim. You need you, to mute YouTube. Mute, mute YouTube. One second. And you, and, and you sell at the show, so you should have your camera on. You ain't got an excuse. Uh, <laughs> so at the right, show, that is that, Exotic is Enclosures, it, which is Tim. Uh, you can check them out, exoticenclosures.co.uk. Um, also, Tim has owned and run pet shops or reptile shops. Um, as well as has got a great deal of experience in that area as well. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's always a tricky one with retails buying at shows. But, you know, for people that aren't aware of it, there's only really two, three main wholesalers that shops can go to. And, you know, the prices are ridiculous from them wholesalers. So it's kind of a, you know, we try and offer good stuff in shops um at decent prices to keep it all competitive but you know with retailers or wholesalers doing what they do we struggle hey ratnaforia are you talking about invert wires uh yeah invert wires and everything else it's um you know it's tricky i i haven't got a shop anymore i sold it four months ago um but yeah invert wise even reptile wise it's really really difficult there's no legislation set in place to say who and where we can and can't buy any reptile inver anything basically. That that is surprising, especially when it comes to reptiles, because I thought things would have to be checked. No, so I uh, let's use this as an example, Scott. You be you breed ranking dragons. Just for argument's sake, I can come to you and say, I want 50 ranking dragons. You can go, yeah, there we go. Box them all up for me. I can take them back to the shop, house them for two weeks to make sure that they're all feeding and everything's good. Then they can go up for sale. Only two weeks? Yeah, two weeks quarantine. That's all that's required. Well, it's, that's not even required. I will be honest, it's the given of what happens with majority of pet shops. That's a bit shocking. How, yeah, about, on, I, um, how about if a reptile is wall caught? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we, we never dealt with wild caught because we never believed in it, uh, especially on the reptile side. I know on the invert side, it's a bit more challenging, challenging shall we say um but i know of shops that do literally import animals and they're straight up for sale as soon as they come out of the box welcome jezza oh hello so hey jezza so we, we we had a bit of an incident last year um involving some things um and i think it showed the the relevance and the need for quarantining of wild caught Oh, 100%. 100%. I, I totally, totally, totally agree with quarantine. I mean, I know creatures from the north quarantine for a minimum of 90 days. And I know yep. Rad's quite proud of that fact as well, because he's got a separate room to do it. Um, but I'm quite, quite shocked. Yeah, there, there is no legislation to say that it's got to be quarantined, full stop. Because even the stuff that you bring in from a private um breeder mm -hmm. they could have anything going on in that room oh 100 and you're not going to know and then you've put nope. them hey reese you've put them straight out on your shop and then 
possibility of something going wrong get increases, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, and that's the issue that a lot of people face, especially when, you know, going out buying raw pythons and so on and so forth. You know, they're buying them at... I'm not in the retail anymore, so I don't really care saying about prices, but, you know, most shops will buy a <laughs> fire raw python at anywhere between 10 and £35. Pounds. Sometimes even as low as a fiver, you know, depending if it's a normal wild type. You know, and I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. They come into the shop and they go straight out on the shelf. You don't know if that's feeding correctly. You don't know anything about that animal. I think that I think that shows when it goes from being somebody's passion, maybe initially, to being, oh, let's make a lot of money. Yeah. Well, you say make a lot of money. It's um, yeah. Shops don't make a lot of money. Uh, I'll be brutally honest. That's, that, well, that, that, that's, prob that's probably why their prices are then higher than what they potentially should be because heating bills, electric bills are going to be sky yeah. high in a reptile shop. Oh, one hundred percent. You know, be incredible. Well, I, you know, I'll talk about my shop. My electricity bill for one month alone. Um, well, let's say August, September last year, so not particularly cold. I was in the region month on month, anywhere between 15 and two and a half grand a month. Damn. And that's what, wow. probably the winter, almost triple, I guess. Uh, yeah, winter time, to be honest, I used to try and run a diesel, uh, generator out the back because it was just, it was cheaper to run it on white diesel than it was to pay the electricity bill. No. Wow! You know, it's yeah. <laughs> if anyone's saying that, saying anything in the comments, I'm not being rude. I can't see the comments, so yeah. Um, if anyone is saying anything, but yeah, you know, it's it's expensive. It's very expensive. Uh, see, I mean, I worry when the electric bill goes up by hundred quid. I'm like, oh my god, you know what I mean? If it, if it's like two or three hundred quid, what? Yeah, there was one shop Thousands that was local. Is. There was one shop local to us. Their electricity bill for six weeks was <clears> just shy of ten and a half thousand pounds. <coughs> <coughs> so. Um, Eric, who, he's not actually in the UK, says, made the mistake of buying plants from the wrong pet store. Once took out all the amphibians, did somehow carry a carithid fungi. Oh, my God. Ouch. <clears throat> yeah, that's the problem. Wow. I've got to be so careful with the amphibs because they're super sensitive to fungal, bacterial, yeah. viral infections. Is that, is that one of the reasons why you have to set up your tank and leave it cycling for months before you put the frogs in? Yeah. It's a contributing factor, yeah. You can point out, you can tell if something's going off in that enclosure in the first couple of weeks. Stuff will start growing, things start dying, plants-wise. Um, like with the crab tank, my vampire crabs now... Hey, Amy. All the plants are Hi, doing... Amy. Hey, Amy. Signs of mould. Well established tank. I only got the one female vampire now, uh, but the mint legs in there. She's um yeah, despite what people say of centipedes digging up everything, she's not dug up one plant because they have established roots. Just chucked a bit of moss around. We we've got the the apple crab, oh my god, I looked twice the other day. They're so cool. I, look, I looked and I thought, there's two. And then I looked again, it was like the malt. And it was perfectly intact. I was like, oh, "Wow, this is this is pretty awesome." <coughs> yeah. Has it eaten it yet, or left it? Oh yeah, yeah. Got, it's the one I got off Gavin, and Gavin was like, "All the normal feed," he said, "is is completely awesome." He said, "But try the live food," and I was like, "What?" I said, "I've never ever fed live food to a crab," so I did, and it munched a red runner, and I was like. I was like, babe, babe, come on, have a look at this. So, <laughs> look, look, look. And she couldn't believe it either. It was like, what? what? And the crab actually caught it by doing nothing. Yeah. Didn't chase it down, didn't do any of that. Just sat there waiting for it to come close enough and went. 
Brilliant. Like with the rainbow crab I had a couple of years ago, he was a beast at hunting locusts. You drop a locust in, you'll run towards it, just use his big claw to pin down the locust and just start picking it. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just going to have to mute myself a second. Shut the fuck up, you fucking fat cunt, you fucking ugly wanker. I'm not Chris, selling any, any more signs to you then, Chris. Uh, Chris, I, I need to put a warning out before you jump in. Because people I warned them. kids watching. I warned them, I showed the time limit, so shut the fuck up, you fucking fat. Yeah, boy. so it's nine o'clock, so at this point we do swear we do have adult conversations. So if you've got any children watching and they heard Chris, I do apologise. <laughs> Um, but if you have got any kids watching, move them from your TV sets, your phones, whatever it is, because we will swear we do have a bit of adult conversation from time to time. Um, Louise, I've got snakes and tarantulas. The one expensive snake I got was a pastel ball python, cost 190 quid. That's with the starter kit. So now I'm just having tarantulas. <laughs> I kept a few snakes a couple of years ago, but I let them go because I needed the room for more spiders. Um, if Agent I had the room, I would still have the snakes, that's for sure. Yeah, snakes are one thing I can't have. I'll get kicked out of the house otherwise. Chantal says, there's also ladies present, Chris. What? What? That's okay. <laughs> you don't care. You don't, you don't, you don't, you, he only cares about a few little things, and that's it. I care about nothing. <laughs> Jeremy, you little cop out. What? I can't afford to come to the invert show. I can't afford it. I couldn't. But you went to the reptile show the weekend before, didn't you? It was shit. That's because I already had the membership still and the train blah, ticket. Blah, blah, blah. He's fucking shit. Look, he's putting <laughs> camera on on this live and he comes on Fridays. He doesn't put camera on. I was feeding. I don't yeah, feed. it's because your butler was there and your maid was there. We fucking know that. Boxes, We've so met the maid, Chris. Done. What? Oh wow! Yeah, I got four boxes going. Out. Four boxes going out. Yeah, just uh, some pods. Um, some pods. Some oh shoes. shit, Amy! I might be joining a second, guys. But if not, I'll, uh, I'll catch you in a bit. In a bit, oh, Charlie. Oh, no worries, Charlie. See you soon. See you later, Charlie, dude. Um, oh, Amy's do do broke that? a rib. Oh, wow. Shit. Hope you're okay. Jesus. Amy. Zombie Dark Blade, I've not got the balls to go to a show. Zombie, come on. You can turn up at a show. If you're outside, just drop me a message and I'll come out and meet you. Um, you'll be it's, fine. Absolutely fine. Rose, Rose it's says. Not cruel, but it's also, you're taking out the possibility of producing not wild caught captive, captive brave tarantulas. Because at the end of the day, that male will go to waste. But it also, if, if you would sell it further or give it further away, there's a chance there's going to be more captive bred spiders in the hobby. Mm. It's just, it's, yeah. there's nothing wrong with own. keeping some males, especially if you have a sentimental value for it. But <coughs> usually, you, it, it's, a, it's, just, it, it's up to you. There's nothing wrong in keeping him. Yeah. It's just the fact that, that if you... Buy, keep, that's pet. So yeah. you didn't buy it, as an intention of breeding it. So if you don't want to breed that specific spider, if you have, of course, sentimental value to it. It's like my Vitalius Chromatis, my first T. Pretty sure it's a male. I'm not sending him out for breeding because I'm going to keep him. Uh, yeah. Plus, too many Chromatis. Anyway, so, um, but yeah, I always that, try to That is him. the issue as well. If it's an Alpia Chromatis, it, it is, there's already a lot out there. So trying to get rid of all those slings is going to be a bit of an issue. Unless you feed them off to the other slings. Then then, 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 then there comes some species like vesicles, well, not vesicles, uh, pool grass and stuff like that, what people tend to keep, but there's not many in. That's why the price is skyrocketed, because people just can't breed them and don't breed them, and there's not many males around. Mm. It's like I've been looking for Calcodes male for months and months and months, and I can't find one. Kubik says, like, uh, some males spend several years alive after maturing like the pulchra uh, mm. kind of depends on the individual just going off what jeremy and chris were saying when it comes to the males yeah if you've got a mature male try and find somebody that's got the female it's even better if you know them personally um you get slings back whatever yeah is it cruel to not pair the male that to me i don't i'm, I'm 
the no, jury really, no. out. But, but my not. thoughts are the females don't seem too bothered. The males are the ones that they're the driving force behind the breed, and so they're the ones that normally start tapping first and whatever. So is the mature male going to drop a sperm web and start looking for a female around its own enclosure and start, start tapping every now and again? Maybe. Maybe so. <coughs> to reduce wild court in the in the hobby, the mature males could do with being loaned out and, and paired it, it up. Won't re- it won't reduce wild court. It will reduce the price, which, which will eventually affect the wild court. Still, but it will, there still will be wild court. Still. So, so if you've got 10 SARS, mate, and they're all paired, and you have egg sacs off all of them, then there's no need to buy any more wild court for a little while. Yeah, but it, it's not that. They, they will still sell them cheaper. And which is we still, drive, we still, which is gonna drop the prices down, and eventually they'll ju- they'll just see it's, it's, it's a long term. Don't, don't get me wrong, Chris. We still need, we still need wall court in the hobby. Exactly. Yeah, I, we, I, we I, do need. I, I, for some things, I don't disagree with wall court stuff because do, we do need new fresh bloodlines eventually. Yeah. Oh, most definitely. Well, going back to the Sobiska Lowland and Highland. I think I wouldn't have any. You know, we if we could get wild caught, we need them in the hobby, but we obviously we can't. But the ones that are in the hobby are that darkened or um, hobby form. It's unreal. I don't think there's actually any true form in the hobby at the moment. Um, that's that's when we do need the wild caught. But I wish people would have bred inverts that were common a decade or so ago, like the Rosia. Um, Emper- Emperata, which is the um, Emperor Scorpion. These days, I don't see them as often these days as I once did due to import stops. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the older boys that have been hunt- in the hobby for a long, long time will turn around and say, you know, Emperor Scorpions were a couple of quid as adults back in the day, and so and so was the G Rosa back in the day. You know, adult females I heard were like 10 or 15 quid, and now look at the price. Um, and emperors, you're looking at 50 quid for ones that are this size. As well, it's not just because of stopping wild caught, it's because having the access to the spiders in general, the countries just decide to stop exportation of these species. You're no longer going to get them whether they're captive. Well, you will get well, them captive, um, but obviously expensive, but you won't get cheap wild caught specimens anymore. And I've had a couple of conversations and some things hey, I know... Jason. Some of these wild caught spiders, people don't necessarily want them because they're wild caught, it's because of the size. They don't necessarily want a tiny sling that's going to take 10 plus years to get some adult coloration and some size. So, you know, until no, Mark. people, the message comes across that, you know, we should encourage captive breeding, people will still want those big spiders, you know. That's true. I think it isn't, it hasn't Brazil stopped all exports of animals, full stop? Technically, it did off as well. You off, Chris? See you later, Chris. Take care, See you later, Chris. Take care, mate. Bye, See you off, Friday. Look after yourself, man. Oh, Cheers for popping on, dude. He, no yeah, way. he's... See, See you later, dude. Oh. Yeah, Chris is um, very unwell at the moment. Very unwell. He needs a good sleep. Um, what, what did you say about Brazil? Sorry? For, technically, they never really allowed exportation first place um you know the government's I'm having, that. I'm having the fly problem <laughs> as well <Jezza. laughs> I know. problem is my dad got some plants in here and he opened up a bag of compost and that compost yes. was covered yeah. in that yeah so that's the same yeah i had a strong word with him that's for sure <laughs> it's <been> annoying <laughs> i've got chaps. every time every, every time i've opened compost there's been a few flies inside every time i've opened up peat moss none Peat moss, nothing. Topsoil, nothing. nothing. Peat, peat moss, no, no mites, no flies, no nothing, nothing no mold, no mushrooms. Oh, and then what do they do? Oh well, actually, we need to um, stop selling it to the public now. <laughs> you guys want something good now? Too bad we're taking it away now. <laughs> I was going to say, if anyone needs any peat moss, I've got about two ton of it. <laughs> oh yes, Tim, most definitely because. <laughs> Because in 2024, they're stopping selling it to the public and um, only for commercial use because of the devastation to Ireland is causing. I think it's more the illegal gathering of the stuff that's the problem. It's, and yeah, Ireland it's the same not doing it all. 
yeah, it's the same as nat- natural moss or live moss. The amount of licensing I have to jump through to get that is unreal. Um, Rose says to everyone streaming, what are your personal favourite inverts um, that you own? Oh my god, uh, my favourite out of no. Hey Gwen. No, uh, Rose. It's like hey, it's like it's it's like putting me in a burger stand and saying Scott pick one burger. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to happen. <laughs> it, it, it just it's like it's like asking me to have like a bacon batch about the eggs. I I ain't got a clue. They're all my favourite. They've all. I tend to remember where I've got them from. How you know and how they've done over the years. Um, and then I pay particular attention to maybe the newer ones that we've got. Um, but they're literally all my favourite. I don't know about you, Trond. Um, favourite, it's kind of difficult. Uh, I'm now in a point where I'm really into the desert species of scorpions. So, what I have in my collection, I would say the androcnus species is really high up there but i also really really love the coloration and attitude and personality from the titius genus as well yeah you can keep all the good stuff what's yours jezza true spiders dude <laughs> uh all kinds of varieties loads of projects on the go just i never get bored of them um, Carla says, is there a way to tell if a tarantula is impacted? So impaction. So this is basically a spider that needs to go to the toilet and it's not going. Um, so they, instead of saying constipated like for humans, they, they change it to impacted for some reason. But what I've noticed before is like a crust around the abdomen where the, where the poo would come out, so around by the spinnerets. And I've used warm water on a cotton bud to very, 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 very fucking gently just try and work it off. But you've got to be slow um, doing it. And the spider has to be able to sit there as well. So if it's an old world, you are really risking getting bit at that point. Um, but when they do go, they really do go, do you know what I mean? I don't know about Jezza, you got anything else to add on to that? Um, yeah, just telltale signs is that if you haven't fed that tea for a while, and you notice white cross building at the um, spinneret area. That's mainly what you're looking for. Um, but most people think in action, as in action, most of the time they're in pre model. The main signs is just a large abdomen. You haven't fed them for a they've got the crusting on the end of the abdomen. Yeah, like Scott said, try to work it off. Increase the humidity in the enclosure if you can. You don't need to put it Osman <laughs> says, yeah, there's no shit. We're no poo on the windows. Yeah. True spiders. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Oh, I've got tons on these. O- o- Osmond will be screwing looking at these enclosures at the moment because there's shit all over the windows. <laughs> <laughs> he will be absolutely screwing. And if you've ever had the opportunity of seeing his on a live stream, you'll know why because these are all mint. Oh. Um, absolutely. Something else. Oh, the LEDs. Oh, God. Oh, so- man, o- Osmond knows what he's doing, doesn't he? um louise says my boyfriend got an obt and i wouldn't even go near it but when it's feeding time i get to feed it now i really want one i think with the obts they get they get not oh, not really bad press but it's more the sellers kind of going this this spider the obt so aggressive really really nasty spider so spicy it's unbelievable and then 50 percent of the people there go oh i want one then i'll buy it then Mm. Um, and that, that's pretty much it with OBTs as, as long as they're housed correctly um, they are they're in a box so they can't get you so you've got no issues they're not really going to come flying off the web in and come and get you um, you know they're only going to come out of the web in if you go messing with them completely um, in some nasty way do you know what I mean if you start poking around in there of course they're going to come out and have a go of course they're going to give you a threat pose Nine times out of ten, though, your spider's safe spot. You know, we've all got our little safe areas, whether it be the bedroom, the garden shed, or over the park. 
that, that on when a spider's in its webbing, that is its safe spot because it can feel what's going on around it. It knows what's going on around it, and if anything comes into its area, it knows instantly. So it doesn't want to move off that webbing. And what an OBT tends to do is move fast. So if you take the lid off, it'll move quick, especially the smaller ones. Um, and all it's doing is trying to get a sense of what's going on. So if you take the lid off, drop food in quickly, it'll it'll go, oh, food, well, gone, job done. Um, so that that's the main thing with OBTs, I think. Let me just go back up the top. Charlie's agreed. Uh, almost always just threat pose and run back into their web. Back, um the Blue Death and Be Beatles are probably my favourite. Super active and amusing. Yeah, yeah, it's just a shame. It's a shame because is that is that you, Jezza? Who's got the Who's got the car horns going? Oh, uh, I'm on an industrial estate and I've moved about a quarter of a mile in an hour. Jesus, it's late at night. And Tim's on an industrial estate with his lorry. Now there's then there's an industrial estate in Coventry, and the lorry drivers park up there. And these girls go up to them and knock the window, and they disappear in there fifteen minutes and come back out. Is that what you're up to, Tim? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, certainly not. I'm trying to work out if I can turn this camera around and actually show you. Uh, Are you on the phone, Tim? I am. Yeah. Press the three right. little buttons that says more. Yeah, there, you there go. we go. Oh my god! That that is literally wow. been my view for the last hour, and it is yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, welcome. welcome to Southall. <laughs> oh my what god! Night, Amy. <laughs> take care. Night, Amy. Night, Amy. Oh. Take care. Sellers need to change from aggressive to defensive, said Gwen. They do. They also need to stop making up common names and identifying their species themselves. And it's, it's frustrating. So frustrating. Because if there's a spider and it's not got a common name, it's because that the only reason it's not got a common name is because we've not bothered to ask the local people what the common name is. So if 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 we then give it a common name we're not only giving it the wrong common name we're also insulting the people where the actual spider comes from i think and if anybody's going to give it a common name it should be the people that live alongside that spider i think um yeah. i don't know what your guys thoughts are on the end no i agree you know. any invert any invert, any animal i think for me it's really annoying because if you take like the Asian forest scorpion common name. <laughs> Don't give that the was, that, that's half <laughs> half of all the scorpions in the hobby. Yes. And then again you have a uh, fat tail. One common name, it doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. And then Silver Webbers OBT, yes, that, that is the actual common name because the locals call them the orange bitey thing. Um my wife calls it the orange bastard thing. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah the local was actually have, called um, scorpion vice you have fat tail that's multiple of genuses yep so you could argue the most majority of the buffer day family are fat tails yeah <laughs> and we can't keep the, the the family full stop in the uk even though there's some species that aren't going to do i haven't even got significant venom as you know it, it's a little bit annoying. It's just because they're in that family. It's like some of the Europeans buffer day. They they're venomous. <laughs> You'll compare it to others. Uh, in European in European, as in like um, the Mediterranean areas and stuff. No, not Mediterranean. Sorry, brain's not working. Greece. There's some like buffer day, like Greece and stuff like that. They're harmless, but because they're buffer day, can't own them. Which is a bummer. But yeah. It's like with common names, uh, with true spiders, it's kind of a pain because you know most of the time they're unidentified, and you know there are some identifying factors. Like uh, it's more not really common names, but you know when like a random huntsman comes in. It's like for example today. Oh, I've got, I've got this. Yeah. So 
I don't know how well you'll be able to see her. I'll put a red one in usually. Hold on, let me put you on big big screen. Don't want to see more be more. You want to see genders. Uh, nice. Up. So yeah, this came in with head to the bow eye. And you can see the various similarities, but this is um what the Not hobbies bow eye. the uh green ocelot. So there's got a lot more different kind of well, you know what let me turn my camera around give me, give me one second Hold on. because <laughs> it will focus better that way <laughs> again we are finishing a little bit early tonight we are finishing at 10 o'clock um because i've got i've got to take the wife at the hospital to get the hip looked at oh my word jezza so you see how oh, different wow. oh i fingers fingers crossed she's gravid mate Oh, she's looking good, dude. Looking good. I'm going to oh, read oh. after the stream today. I've also got some Pandacretes in. Um, but yeah, so have you, you got, see the, this. you got the mail for I, her as well? Uh, this one, no. It came in, in It came in with the bow eye. But you can see why there was mistaked as a bow eye. You know, very similar face. Chalicera looked the same, but the colorations are very distinctive to the bow eye. Oh, Charlotte says we just call them. Nope. <laughs> yeah. No, these How are can you say no? If you keep tarantulas, the true spiders should be another area that you should look at. Keep your hobby fresh. Yeah. It's, it's you know, with things like this, it's like people don't know what the species is. It's new to the hobby. Hetropod, yes. Let's see. It's green. It's got spots like an ocelot. Green ocelot. But that's it's just identifying factors. And then hopefully down the line, once identified, people can track back to what specimens they had before. And then we'll be able to find out what species it um, you know, is. Is a Singapore blue old world? Yes. It's just a thing of working with it eventually and hopefully getting those common names and scientific names sorted out. But, you know, with everything coming in new all the time. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. They, I think the sellers need to take a little chill chill out and go, do you know what? Let's, let's quarantine them. And while we're quarantining them, will actually correctly identify them and as you know jezza there's people out there that can do it you know you know yourself um tim heller uh, um there is there is some cool people out there that can identify literally 90 percent of the true spider uh, like reese has been a channel member for 11 months says woohoo almost a year now scott you're a wanker <laughs> <laughs> charlotte says I've... yeah i've got so few spiders and jumpers it's just the long legs for me i can't Ah, uh, yeah, I get that. The social spiders say, are cool, though, aren't they, Charlotte? You ain't got your like sign in place, leave. Scott. Sorry? You ain't got your little sign in place. Where is it, actually? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I had to get the Malversi out of that enclosure. <laughs> and they both shit all over the windows. Surprise, surprise. Um, arachnophoria, arachnophoria does replacement lids on exoterrors. And I'm not going to say much more because I'm going to do a video on them because they're absolutely awesome. Awesome. I need them. Uh, Chantal, can I get a link for verified pizza, Dave? Oh, I must have missed that joke. Uh, it says, oh my God, Jeremy. <laughs> they're pretty they're so nice like photos looks like the spider that hagrid had in harry potter i can sit there and identify okay. them so much now it's like i got a box full of them what? the brighton show i think it was brighton no was it brighton did i trade at brighton I what's did. the spider in harry potter it's not aragog is it uh the wolf the wolf spider <laughs> Yes. I think it's... Uh, is it Aragog? I can't remember. I think yeah. it is. I think it's Aragog. I'll be surprised if it's not, because I love, a bit, love Harry Potter. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, wicked. I, I, I was thinking, is it, though? <laughs> uh, waiting on some bits for myself for them. Wanting to test their nesting web, says Charlie. When it comes to those African social spiders, my advice is... Spider shop was selling three at a time. 
if you can afford to get 20 get 20 um because the social spiders do better in groups because what happens is the the males will hide away so they create like a nest area which looks like um it looks like a load of paper mache webbed up and the males live inside there and they'll come out just purely to breed and then what happens with the other social spiders they're all females so some of those females will also almost be like a dedicated breeding female so they'll be the ones that have the egg sacs and then the other ones will help those females look after the spiderlings but what's really impressive with these is all that nutritional fluids that are inside the females bodies just 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 bear that in mind so when those females get old and they know that they're slowing down it's coming to the end of life and all the rest of it they donate their bodies to the slings so literally they will go to the slings and there must be some form of communication and then the the the, the, the spiderlings will actually eat that female then um i just think as far as recycling goes um i think that's actually awesome the it, the common name is african social spider but they are literally a true communal species i think um, in yeah. my humble opinion uh, um big- uh, and one of what well, one of only three spiders that are truly communal i think in the world is it jezza or is or is there two hey ben there's a few species um there's the social huntsmen's in australia as well as the they're like a little weaver spider and they can have hundreds in a massive nest uh same with some yeah so like the stegodife some of them are communal um the ones yeah there's like a little orb weaver that like spreads silk across multiple trees and they like live together Ooh. in the uh, jungles of central america uh, the yeah. rancher rookies just dropped me a message and said he's going to donate one of his beanie hats to the 10k giveaway oh, nice they're nice i need to get one of those <laughs> scott if you've got, got a 10k if you've got a 10k giveaway we'll we'll put a tank in oh nice one tim appreciate that no drama at all yeah the social spiders are cool the females when they die no it was called uh matrophagy so once the the slings hatch the female starts breaking down their internal organs into a fluid baby eat her and then yeah like you said the females will scout around and larger prey items i've seen this with my colony which is uh back there in that cube there so the prey will come in one will find them go back to alert the others they'll all start climbing out they'll start pulling some will start pulling on the prey injecting venom how do they how do they alert the others how how so uh, what i've seen is i'll put the prey item in uh, i'll crush the head so it doesn't break out the web uh and it'll start twiggling around one will come down and it'll go back to the nest and more will start coming out and then what they'll do is some will spread around the prey item start pulling it securing it into the web injecting venom Others will go around and start reinforcing the web, keeping that prey item in so they can paralyze it. And then they drag it back into the social nest. It's fascinating. And I'd love to see Could them. Could you feed- imagine being that paralyzed prey item being dragged <laughs> to the social nest? My God. It's like horror story, like the ultimate horror movie, isn't it? Um, Martin yeah. Jackson says, can we own any spider legally in the UK? Or is the spiders? Yes, there is spiders out there, Martin, that you need a DWA. Um, I'm not too up on the full list, so please head over to the DWA website and check that out. Um, at the shows, there isn't any at the shows. Um, it, it's it's just um, they don't do DWA at all at the shows. Um, significantly, or what they class as significantly medical venom as well, they don't do those. So like sand spiders are um, banned, and some of the tight funnel webs as well, if I remember right. Yeah, um, Matt's in chat. Tarantula Rookie has been a channel member for 15 months. So, congrats, Scott, you lovable munter. <laughs> love Matt, man. Love him to bits. <laughs> he's, he's, I love Matt. <laughs> uh, Jessa, hmm? uh, I don't know if you watch his videos or not, but uh, Bugs and Biology. Ah. Have, have you seen his recent video? I haven't, no. What is it? Uh, top five uh, of his spider encounters. And uh, 
he shows in that video, it's the biggest true spider I've ever seen, and it looks like it's from the movie Jumanji. Is, is he Australia? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'd be why they they have the, the biggest spider in the world over there. Is it? Okay. Is it Gigantia? Uh, it's Holconia. I can't remember which one it is. I've got one down here. Hold on. Just while Jeremy's off to get that, April and Mike Zarakno says Mike said when he lived in Australia, the baby huntsman used to come out of the lights and drop on you. Pure arachnophobia vibes. Oh my god! I mean, I'd even go, "What the fuck?" At that point, Rose yeah. says, "I met a gentleman in person who told me that his friend had two widow spiders in the UK. Is this possible, or is he just full of bullshit?" Um, no, it is completely possible. You can false widow spiders are native to the UK or certainly living here. Um, you can have false widow spiders from Europe as well. Include, I mean, Jeremy has got an absolutely stunning one. Um, but the actual widow spiders that can do you some damage, yeah, they're in the UK and they're owned by those that got a DWA. Let me just um, put Jeremy on yeah, big so this screen. Holconia muriensis. You can see the size of him. Huge. Spider. Australian. Hey, Perla yeah. Pasha. I got this from Bugnut. Right. Uh, female. <laughs> But <laughs> it's got big palps. <laughs> oh. But I'm still happy with him. He's he's a lovely spider. He's huge. Absolutely massive. He can take down adult dubia. Just to give you a perspective on how big this huntsman is. Huge. Wow. More big than light though. Nice. Nice. But yeah, I've wow. owned, um two species of Hogconia. So now this is Miriensis. Oh there you go, stay still now. So you can see hand span quite big. Uh, but I've owned Muriensis and Insignis, and uh, they're very, very cool huntsmen. Highly recommend them, mainly because of size and that a dry speed, obviously, from Australia, so they, they can handle arid temperatures, so you don't have to worry about mismolting and stuff. Um, but yeah, very, 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 very. Um, April Mike said, it shocks me that we have the six-eyed sand spider and that we don't need a license. Um, explain to me why we do need a license. Mm. Big debate. Big debate. Uh, I've got to shoot, guys. Thank you very much again. Are you on the move, Tim? Yeah, uh, they're just about to come out and start offloading, so I'm out. <laughs> oh, no worries. Cheers uh, for joining, dude. No drama. So, no, no, thank you. And uh, it was nice seeing everyone at the show. Yeah, man. It was good uh, to see you. Tim, I'll see you at London. Take it easy, dude. Uh, yes, you will. We'll see awesome. you there. <laughs> Take see it easy. Bit. See you later, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. That was Tim from um, exoticenclosures.co.uk. Does a lot of the new type acrylics. Um, he, he actually goes into it a little bit deeper as well. So I've got one of his new acrylic enclosures with me. Um, and Tim said to me, he said, don't do a review video. Don't, don't show it on YouTube or anything like that. But I think it's important to tell people about the process because he said he's unsure on the glue. So he said, would I test it? To see if there's any improvements that need doing to that enclosure maybe the glue might be changing maybe the glue will come apart so that's what i'm doing it so i'm not actually going to put a spider in it i'm going to um, put some high humidity plants in there with a substrate and get it absolutely dripping for a little while put it right up at 30 degrees on the top of my racking and see if it all holds together and then report back to him but i really kind of appreciate that type of look at an enclosure instead of just going i made this here it is bump and it's for sale um I, I like to hear about the testing behind it all as well um it's awesome uh i would but i can't hold oh, one second maybe i can Can you pass me that enclosure? But I, th oh, I think it. I think it's really cool that he's literally said, "Look, just go and test this enclosure. It's not for a video." But you know what I mean. Don't do a review on it or anything like that. Just test it until it falls apart. Um, so that process, that whole process, I, I think is is pretty damn good. But it's, yeah. it's this one. Ooh. So if I hold it that way. 
it's still, it... it will be see-through once I took all the plastic off. This bit is magnetic. And when I first saw this, I said to Tim, I was like, are those magnets strong enough? Um, yes, they are. <laughs> really? Oh, yes, they are. Um, so I am um, literally going to put something in it, some substrate in there and get it nice and wet for a little while. And then I'm then going to dry it out like literally instantly and see if it warps or does anything like that. And then if it's all right with Tim, because he said destroy it, I'm going to put weight on the top until it actually crushes. Um, so I'm going to get some weights and just go like that and see what weight we can put on top. Um, more importantly, when we do that, I'm going to see if the sides actually bellow out. Because you know what we're all like. We've got an enclosure and then suddenly we go, I've got something heavy in our hands and we're in the spider room and we go, oh shit, where could I put this? And you always put it on top of another enclosure, don't you? You don't even think, you go, oh, fuck it, warmth. You know, so that that's the plan for this. Um, so far, I am liking I'm liking the actual design. I know what you're going to say, and, and I said the same thing, is that this bit could have been a bit deeper um, at, the, at the side. So this piece here, so you can only get that much substrate in at the front, but you can go as high as you want at the back. So you can literally slant it like you're on the side of a side of the mountain. So my mountain type spiders are going to absolutely love it. So like something like an olivacea um, would be an idea in there. But like I said, we're going to absolutely hammer this and um, send the feedback back to Tim and um, see what he says. But I just love the fact that he said, look, I, I really need this testing as opposed to being in a video. Mm. Uh, I, I, you know, for me as, an, as a keeper, I'm like, oh, OK, you've just gone up another level, in my opinion. Um, but that's what's going to happen. It's good. I've already got ideas running through my head. Like I put a wolf spider in there or like you said, of building a substrate in the back. Could you imagine in the corner, the fistius, have the trap door, lots of plants around? Oh, so good. What, Scorpio? Yes, sir. Yes, John. Uh, I've just messaged you. Uh, I took a screenshot from the. See if you know what species it is, because it's the uh -oh. biggest, coolest thing I've ever seen. Well, let me have a look now, actually. Uh, Gwen. Okay, what about sand spider? I think, if memory serves me correct, and again, this is a true spider, so it's more Jer Jeremy's area. If memory serves me correct, I think there's only ever been a one single death, and that was a young girl that had some severe underlying health issues at the time as well. Um, but mine, when so I, I keep a sand, I keep sand spiders. I've got two, so I don't really see them unless I'm feeding. If you put the paintbrush next to them, they come out, have a look, and then they disappear off to the other side of the enclosure. They don't seem to be a threat pose. I'm going to bite your type of a spider. So I think more more research definitely needs to be done on the on the on the venom. But then also the species that we have in in the hobby, they they think there's something like thirty thousand more species of sand spider out there because they just have not discovered the actual spider because it's so good at hiding. Um, I don't know if you if you got any information on the actual venom. Jedi. Where's the car? Um, yeah, let's go. Really let, yeah, let's go. Siricarius um, thomathides. Yeah, so the, what, the what, most what common the one. Census was going about before is because the Sicarius genus is very close related to the Loxoceles genus, which is the brown recluse. And, uh, you know, the brown recluse do have a fairly significant venom. Obviously, you can avoid getting bit by one, but uh, that's what the main concern was before, and that's what was wanting to put them into the the DWA. Then there was like you know that the couple bites and the one that went necrotic and it's so so necrotic, uh, and then they're like, oh no, venom's fine. And then it's, you know there've been multiple papers bouncing back and between uh, the venom, and then they did they did uh, put another species, the hex hexapthalma. They've separated that as the one that has the more significant venom than the uh, domosoides. The, and then, uh, but is no. It, not, is the hexapalma, uh, is, is that um, DWA yet? No, none of those. Oh, thank God. I've got hexapalma. Yeah. <laughs> I was worrying then. 
Um, it was, yeah, they said that, that that genus has more potent venom than the Thomasoides. And now, I don't know if you've seen going around recently, they have the Gracilis about now. New, new Sicaris in the hobby. Sicaris Gracilis. Very nice. The abdomen is like more of a square and it looks like a stone. It's very pretty. But um, yeah, Eric are... Hansen, in regards to deaths attributed to spider venom, isn't it usually something else that's behind it? I remember reading that somewhere. Yes. Um, potentially, yes, because. I mean, things like the Black Widow and stuff like that. I've spoke to lads that keep them in Germany that have been bit by them, and they said the following 24 hours was how, you know, sickness, diarrhea, and then up to two to four weeks for the pain in the area of the bite to go away. Um, but they lived. Um, these are healthy humans, healthy human beings. But when it comes to underlying problems in a human, um, we're, we're then susceptible to anything else. So anything that, that could damage you, is like tenfold when you're ill, isn't it? Or when you've got something else, something attack. If you've already got an issue with your autoimmune system, then yeah, you, 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 the level of immunity against things like spider bites and that is going to be extremely low. So you are going to be putting yourself in more risk um, if, if you're messing around with them, if, if, if that's okay. Uh, Metal Theologian, how do they estimate the spiders of venom potency? I think isn't it doesn't it come down to grams and what what a gram could do to the human body yeah and then how much of that would take to kill a person and then how much the actual spider can can hold um, yeah well, well, and be, average, before anybody mentions daddy long legs being the most venomous spider on the planet and <laughs> it can't open its fangs to bite you but if it could it'd kill you bloody bloody blah, blah, blah that is a load of bullshit it was it was actually just um, a load of nonsense set out to see how viral it would actually go. And now it's become urban legend. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... Uh, isn't it also, because I read somewhere about the scorpions, it's also how hey, much Matt. venom they on average deliver each yes. time. Per, per bite slash thing. And that's if you get um, an envenomated bite. Because most yeah. of the time they'll give a dry bite. Yeah. But if, if, I think um, I think memory serves me right, but something like the King Cobra is only DWA because the amount of venom it actually holds in its body is is the biggest um, of any animal. Full stop. Yeah. But if it was down in a minute scale, it wouldn't really have much of an effect. It's just the fact that they can. Oh, it's the so much it's of that, that venom much. into you in one go. It's unreal. Yeah, um, it's tarantula rookie says, Scott, I send you a message for the giveaway. Matt, I mentioned it on, on here. Yeah. So Matt's put in one of his beanie hats into the 10 K giveaway. Um, so yeah, I want to win that. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> Just pocket it. <laughs> yeah. 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 The address you need to send it to Matt is in Coventry. <laughs> send it to Luke. Luke won in and pick it up. Um, Rose, you have to be a channel member, so you have to click the blue join button and pay like. I think I think the lowest subscription is about two quid a month, and then I will send Luke a, a screenshot of all the channel members. So as long as you're a channel member, you will get fifteen percent off at Spa Spiders. So if you want to put a big order in at Spa Spiders, just become a channel member for a month, and you still get the fifteen percent off. Rose, do you, f Eric says, Rose, do you feel comfortable dealing with pokers? Uh, if so, yes. What's that? Uh, yeah, I think uh, Rose mentioned about the uh, Metallicas for us, if um, it's a yay or nay, which I have one, so yay. <laughs> yay. I think with, with Metallicas, it's like the same with every, every single spider. The most dangerous um, part of the hobby for us as a keeper is on rehousing. So when we get a spider from a show and it comes in a box, small pot, getting out of that pot into a bigger enclosure. Now, um, I did mention this about, I don't know, a year, two years ago um, on how I do it. If you get your spider through the post and it's in a pot, um, put it into the enclosure, loosen the lid and then go for your tongs, take the lid off, take the piece of tissue that's above the spider off, close the door to your enclosure and let that spider come out all by itself and in my humble opinion that's probably the the most minimalist way that you could kind of put yourself in danger if you like um is keeping those danger levels to an absolute minimum 
<laughs> and then once that spider's disappeared onto the other side of the enclosure and made its made its little home, open the door slightly, go in with the tongs and take out the old pot, close the door, job done. Then you've only ever got to worry, especially if it's an adult, because you've rehoused it into an adult size enclosure. You've only got to worry about taking out the old food prey. So once it's at it, once it's ate that food and it's gave you back that ball of crap is going in and, and removing that. And that's simply done by just opening the door just a little bit. Same with feeding. Watering, nine times out of ten, if you position the water bowl in, in a good enough spot, you can feed through the mesh or through the lid. Um, so you haven't even got to open the enclosure. So the, the less times we have to open that enclosure, the less times we put ourselves at risk. And more importantly, the more comfortable that spider is going to be in that enclosure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like pokies is pokies are yes from me as well. I love the pokies and I need more. Yeah, well, John loves a good pokey. Matt loves a good pokey. <laughs> I've only got I've got a Metallica and a Red Gallus sling at the moment, pokey wise. Yes, Osman, the, the flipping are. Um, the fasciata here. I'm trying to convince a person with a mature male to do, you know, do his thing, but we'll see. Think Gwen, don't we all? <laughs> um, my wife doesn't at the moment because of the, the hip. Um, that's why. <laughs> uh, Scott, I love the music you use when you show the inverts a show. Um, what when I did the invert show video, the Dude, music I. I'm, I, I mean, I'm not one of these people to tell you, oh, I'll pay a premium for this music crap and all this sound stuff. I'll tell you exactly where I get it from. It's from YouTube Library. Um, so if you go to YouTube uh, Library, literally all the music on there is good for YouTube. And I use Nefex loads uh, because Nefex, for me, are one of the best ones out there. That if they do a rock tune, you kind of, it's not like a proper rock, but you've still got that rock feeling to it. So I find with Nefex, they're, they're like um, more acceptable for everybody, if you like. But that's what I do. I'll go, I'll go on YouTube library, just keep flicking through and flicking through. The only problem that I ever have with it is when I play dead. That is literally Nefex, play dead. When I play dead. But um, the only problem I'd have is if is if some of the other YouTubers in, in the same sort of genre that I do started using Nefex as well, because then it gets boring pretty quick. Um, I encourage everybody to just go on onto YouTube library, scroll through the billions of songs and get your own off it, you know? Um, but I have got a few Nefex songs that are on my phone. I do listen to them in the car. I've got one as a ringer as well. <laughs> I have to say to you... Oh, that, wicked, Rose. So you YouTube know. library songs still require you to credit in description. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. As Tarantula Rookie said then, um, you do have to copy and paste it downstairs. I'll, a lot of the time I've found if it's actually a requirement, YouTube sometimes do it for you. So when you upload it, they'll put it on the end of your description. Um, yeah. But you do have to double check that. Yeah. I am looking at um, another website at the moment that also does free music. And actually, it's actually a decent one. Um, and you don't pay for it. But let me let me have a, a better flick through it and use a few and get some feedback. And then I'll tell you with that website as well. Club says, hello, everyone. I'm looking for mistakes. I'm I'm writing through Google Translator. Scott, thanks for the streams. Health to you and your loved ones from Russia with love. They're, they are also here who really love spiders, and I am among them. No, dude, crap. From the UK to Russia as well, big love. Um, but really, really appreciate you watching from, from all the way over there as well. That's incredible. Thank you. Um, any copyright free songs can be used as Michael. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I would go for the ones that, that the website says you can use this. Do you know what I mean? So then you know. There was a song that I used, um, and and I guess Gwen says I'm the USA. Yes, Gwen. Um, there was a song that I used, and a friend actually wrote the lyrics, sang the lyrics, and it was a rap song. Um, about the postman coming with the spiders and all the rest of it is awesome. And the backing music was made by somebody else. So this somebody else said, yeah, yeah, it's no copyright. I whacked what? it onto YouTube. I didn't get a copyright strike, but I couldn't monetize it because there was slight copyright behind that track. 
So the monetization yeah. money went to the person that actually made the original track, which wasn't his mate, it was somebody else. Um, but yeah, that's a long story. Oh, I There's no that. copyright sounds channels on YouTube you can use, but licenses change. Oh, yes. cheers, Rose. As you fade away, that is a quality track, to be honest. First video I saw of yours was Nefex, as you had a way, and I immediately became obsessed with you as a YouTuber and Nefex. Osman, you do have a problem. Well, you don't. You don't. If you're ever lucky enough to see Osman on one of the lives, he's normally on like Matt. Um, just ask him to flip round his enclosures because, oh man, he is another level any jazzer. He's been taking some of the pictures of the so, true spot of him, uh, the Red Fang and the um, Carolinensis. And my God, he's doing my babies justice. <laughs> <laughs> Photos nice, do take care. Um, yeah, I've just downloaded and downloaded Nefx on Apple Music. Go on, Louise. Um, I am going to be ending the stream in 10 minutes um, because the babysitter will be coming and I can take Tara up to the hospital. We can go and get a hip scanned. Well, I, th I think the babysitter is actually one of her good friends. So I think what's going to happen is I'll drop them at the hospital. And I'll come back, have the kids, get my head down ready for work in the morning. Um, but we, I do need to get up to the hospital. Uh, well, it, it, without me saying, you could probably guess how it happened. Um, but it, it happened over the weekend, and it's just got worse and worse and worse. And she's got what Leo's got. So she's got hyperflexibility. So right. she can fold herself in double and all sorts. And we think when she's done that, she's, she's then hurt her hip at the same time because... You know, she's 30-odd now, so the, the the age side of it starts to take a toll as well now. So. I have a question. Yes, question. What is your favourite Nefex song, Scott? Oh, that's okay. that's like that's like taking me to McDonald's and saying, what's your favourite burger? I don't know. All of them, again. I, 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 I find it really difficult to have favourites. Uh, Gwen, Jeremy and Tron need to talk louder than Scott. Can't hear you. Uh, good luck, Scott. It, Gwen, it's because I've got a big gob. Honestly, Gwen, that's all it is. Um, and Tron's sleeping, so he doesn't talk a lot. He can't sleep. Yeah, anymore. and and uh, it was well, probably about two years ago. Tron was on a live, and he, and he wasn't asleep. He just sitting there like that. And I went, is Tron to sleep? And then he's just been every time he goes on anybody's stream now. It's like, is Tron sleeping? So yeah. for anybody new, it's just a bit of uh, we're still winding Tron up. The Welsh Tarantula, I used Ben Sound for my channel. You have to copy and paste a code into your description. Yeah. I think I think what I'm gonna do is just do do a video on, on the software that I use to make videos, um, what camera I use, what apps I use, and then where the sound comes from as well. Um, because it'll get quite a lot of questions. Again, it's it could be one of those videos that don't get many views, but if it helps some people get into YouTube, happy dates. Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Cheers, Philip. Hi, Helen. Hey, Helen. Hello, Helen. How are you? So, Helen, did you recover from the weekend and show and the visit? What what he means there is Helen and Bastion have been getting it on. The so Bastion flew over to the UK, so what? obviously, obviously, him and Helen were, you know. So she's going to be a little bit tired still. My husband uses his own music. Oh, Gwen, I wish I was, wish I could make music, man. Huh? Uh, Trench Trench Rocky, I've turned my camera and shared screen on a live before to show my software. And how I edit the viewing numbers dropped. Yeah, so, I mean, Matt, Matt, and Jeremy actually are very similar to me. It's like a lot of the videos that we do aren't for views. It's it's very much like if we can help several people out, then boom, <laughs> there it goes. Um, or if it's part of our journeys as well, we'll still record it and still put it up. Um, I think when you see a channel and everyone's like, oh. 
all the way through it, screaming, shouting, oh my God, you know, yeah, forget this, you know, or, or, or a dark room, a dark room always, always gets me thinking, mm. so what are you doing? Coming dude, I've got a scorpion pairing, the Hetrometrus Longer Manus, and I've also got a Scolopendra, Dahani, Samarch and Cherry pairing. I've managed to record the Dahani, the male producing the sperm hammock, producing the sperm, and then the female picking it up. The whole thing recorded, so I can't wait to release that. Oh, I recorded just spontaneously Tara opening the, um, the boys' mystery box with the isopods. I put it onto Facebook, and now oh, people yeah. from YouTube have heard about it and gone, "I've not got YouTube, but uh, I've not got Facebook." Sorry, can you put it on YouTube? So I might just release that as a bonus Saturday video. Do it, um, dude! So cute. <laughs> it was yeah, just that was a really oh, nice video. It was just when when. When Tara said to Leo, "What you know? What have you always wanted?" and he just said Athena, that I was, I still am fighting back tears, man. It's just whew, rocks ya. Um, and Rose says, "I wanted to get a scorpion who grows to a larger size and does not burrow as much. What would be a good pick?" Hmm. Uh, Adrian uh, Forrest. Uh, <laughs> they do burrow a lot. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Majority of them do borrow, or they hide under court bark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Giant Vessel Harry, but also they like to hide. The Jedi? That's not a Jedi? Uh, yeah. A lot of them like to hide. Um, yeah, most of them. I mean, I that's guess. a good shout. The, em the Emperor, as Matt says. Yeah. No, it was. The palpus, both of those um, are quite good for display. Yeah. Um, Louis, you can get a hold of it. I, I mean, the biggest one is Gigametrus. It, it's on Facebook. On the <laughs> Facebook, um... again, it's a pretty penny. <laughs> if you can find them, Tron. <laughs> yeah, if you can. Well, I know, I know where Sorry, to find them. It's just the price. How much? And then that video is on Facebook on uh, the uh, Scott's Inverts Facebook page. Last place I found that because I've I've found them. Oh, Josh! Places, but most of them are just bogus sites that scam you. Yeah. Uh, uh, I found uh, a dealer in Germany. He don't know yet, Josh. Four hundred euros a piece. <laughs> Or a scorpion. Ah. <laughs> I like him, but not that much. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, bros, hiding is fine. It's more that I am not a fan of critters that vanish underground for months on end. Scorpion. Um, get a cat. Scorpions do it get all. a cat. <laughs> all <laughs> scorpions. Literally, get, get a cat. Sadly. Or fish tank. <laughs> Uh, um, Lewis, I, I did see your comment about coming up. Um, I'm literally live for a couple more minutes, dude, and then obviously taking taking the enemy up the hospital. Then, Eric, back when I owned a Swar Swarma Dami, um, I think I paid twenty to thirty pound, uh, twenty to thirty euro a piece for them. Paying over four hundred, never. Wow, Trond, how much in US dollars is that? 400 euros 400 uh, euros what's yeah. that about 390 no three about 380 yeah. 370 380 yeah in, in pounds yeah. just do google go and google euros uh, into dollars i'll do that quickly uh 430 dollars no oh, you don't wicked yeah about three three eighty so mental um, absolutely mental and, uh rose uh thinking about your question about the uh, scorpions if you t want to s have something to look at all the time i would i think the spider shop is sold out at the moment but if you check regularly they have something called the desert buddy box you get one desert harry and you get 
two blue death finning beetles that can live communal. Uh, I would do that and then maybe get a few more beetles to throw in. Because then you always have something going on in the enclosure. Yeah. Thing with death veiny be beetles though, they're like a real dark blue because of the wax. A uh, really light blue, sorry, because of the wax and the protection against the sun, and that disappears when we've got them in the enclosures. So again, you know, going back to the old UV kind of conversation, it's a, it's to me death veiny beetles. It's a bit obvious that they they require if they've got such a high defense against it. Um, quick one for Jeremy. Where can I get uh, site? Oh, rickety from in the UK. Oh, it's like a cosmic yeah, Oreo, Oreo spider. Ling buys them all keep, up, don't you? Keep an eye. Yeah, Ling has some. Keep an eye on Venomous Visions before Ling buys them all again. <laughs> but, you, unseen Universe sometimes. Yeah, Unseen Universe. And I think uh, Butternut had them before, a couple of years ago. Spider Shop. Uh, yeah, um, Spider Shop got the, the small ones, the Thai ones. Those were cool. Um, but yeah, keep an eye on those sites. And yeah, just have a look around on Facebook because people will sometimes sell them in their collection. I got mine in the collection once. Right, it is it is at ten o'clock. Um, so I'm I'm gonna have to go. So I do apologise that tonight, hey Moon, that, that it's been a bit of a short one, two hours. Um, next week we're gonna have a guest on. The week after that, I think we're gonna do the ten k giveaway, which is gonna be an absolutely awesome night. Um, we'll be starting at eight and probably just be prepared for the ten k giveaway one. Just be prepared for a long evening, um, but it's gonna be pretty cool. If you're not subscribed to Jeremy's Wild World. Please do so ASAP. Jezza is such a fucking awesome young man. It's unreal. Hey, Mark. Hey, Victoria. Um, remember to hit Trond up, Trond's legs and stings with a subscription as well. Both these guys occasionally do live streams too. Chris is on wheels who was on earlier. He's doing a live stream on Friday from 8 p.m. Bear in mind, he swears from the word go, as you can probably guess. He does a lot of pairings on his, on his channel. Um, Wednesday. I'm not too sure who's live tomorrow. Sometimes it's Leah from Unusual Pets. Uh, Sometimes it's Tarantula Rookie. But again, another two fantastic channels to hook up with. And then on a yeah. Saturday night, um, Mark Spider Guy's live. And Monday's Phil from Incredible Inverts and Other Animals is is live. Um, and Phil's um, pretty special, actually. He's a, he's a zookeeper. So if you want to ask reptile questions um, or lighting questions, especially around UV, Monday nights are the ones for that one but um yeah i mean the knowledge that man has you would think his head would be twice as big insane insane so the, so there's things happening at the invert shows and i said to nick and i've also spoke to lee now that they need to speak to phil about certain things to get him in place so you know from from that that the shows are just going to be exciting um, again, the actual, so I did a invert show video for my channel, but then I also did the official video for the invert shows channel as well. So go check out the invert channel and go, go comment on that one. Um, just so I get a little bit of feedback. So I know I'm doing the right stuff for that channel as well. I'm getting, a, you know, getting the aspects and the little bits out of the shows that we should be seeing for those that can't attend um all the lectures so the lectures that tim did on the last show steve thornton did on this one you can go and watch all those again as well or if you've not seen them you can go and watch them um the next show is the 28th of april and that's the capital show and it is going to be absolutely epic cannot wait shush shush i'm trading there <laughs> <laughs> you're trading jezza oh go on then quickly quickly go tell ahead. us well What's the top five species that you that you're gonna have on your table that are gonna be like jaw droppers? Right, so I'm going to have uh, probably about fifteen Gandena Meno, which I just got in today. The uh, big black velvet spiders. So I have fifteen of those. I'll have three species, no, five species of wolf spider, including hopefully if they're ready, the pine giants, which are a UK first captive bred. I've got um, one, and she is mm. so good. I'll hopefully have some of those ready by then. They're eating now. 
and then uh, also, oh, I'm trying to think quick. Uh, I'll have um, hopefully the Statodio if they hatch by then. I've got three sacks, no, four sacks now. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be overrun with those soon. Maybe they'll be ready. I don't know. Uh, and then, yeah, huntsmans, um, roaches, isopods, all different kinds of species. I'll have some enclosures and stuff as well for sale. So, yeah. Um, I'll be trading at the moment, show. Can't wait for that. <laughs> what, what, what a lot of people do, and I do not mean this in an insult or in a negative light for Jezebel, but what a lot of people do is go straight to the show. And they see the bigger tables. So those that have bought loads of tables, like Creatures from the North and the Spider Shop. But while loads of people are there, go check out Jeremy's table. Because a lot of the stuff that you can get from other places, Jeremy's got for half the fucking price. So go check him out. Is your dad going to this one as well? Yeah, he'll be with me. Hey, love at first bite. Just hey, man. Say hi. Busy at work. Is your dad going to this one? Sorry, Jeremy. Yeah, he's trading with me. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Um, right, I have got to go. Um, I can... Well, I've, I've heard the front door about 20 minutes ago go, so the babysitter's here. Um, so thank you to everybody that's kind of popped along tonight, dropped a like on the live as well, um, commented in the comments, and all the support is absolutely amazing. Again, thank you to all of you that comment, like videos and all the rest of it, because it's you guys that got me up to 10K by doing stuff like that. It really helps push push those videos and channels and all the rest of it out there. So don't just do it for my channel. Do it for everybody else's as well. Remember, if you watch a YouTube video, drop it a like, drop it a comment, even if it's a negative comment, because we all appreciate that type of feedback. Con constructive criticism is absolutely adored um, by quite a lot of us on, on YouTube. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. Uh, but yeah. And uh, thank you to everybody that's popped on this evening as well. Cheers, Jezza. Cheers, Tron. Appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh -huh. Um, Thursday's video is going to be the um, mystery box from Creatures from the North. I might put the um, £30 um, Spider Shop mystery box on that one as well as, uh, just so we can shake it up a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, that's what's happening on Thursday. Um, and to everybody that wished Tyra all the best as well, I really, really do appreciate that one. Thank you so, so much. Um, but, yeah, night, everybody. All right. Good night. Good night.